I didn't want to draw attention to myself, but something rose up in me that was supernatural. And that's what we need to overcome the days ahead. We need something supernatural, a higher power. And there is no higher power than the Most High. Yield to Him today. Yield to the Holy Spirit what He wants to do, what He, what he wants to make available to you today. What's going on, friends and family? Welcome back to The Reboot, Spirit Reboot, a channel dedicated to helping you, the reformer, rise above the culture and religiosity, to host his presence and be true carriers of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And we can't do that without talking about spiritual power. We're going to talk about spiritual power today. And I'm going to do my best to unpack that from its mystical wrappings and make it plain. They'll often say, oh, you're talking about that laying on of hand stuff, right? Where people fall down, that Pentecostal, you know, giggly goofiness. No, I'm talking about the real, unadulterated power of God we all need in family, in business, in ministry. You can't heal without the power. You can't deliver anyone without the power. And you can't overcome the days in which you are ahead without the power of God. And we're going to talk about how some people tap into spiritual powers because the church doesn't seem to offer them any hope. A pastor once said to me, Chris, people who are power hungry have issues. It's an orphan spirit. And I said, does that justify adhering to a form of godliness that denies the power of God? We need the power of God in our lives. We can't throw out the baby with the bathwater because we've seen some, some goofiness or, or some abuse. Look, you all came to this channel not to hear me talk about politics or end times or, or to delineate all the different kinds of marine spirits. <laughs> Look, I have an opinion on that and I'm glad to share it with you if you want. But if you came to find out practically how to operate in the power of God, then write that in the comments. Say, I need the power of God. Orphan spirits, right? People who are wounded are very vulnerable to seeking out alternative sources of power. They'll gravitate to spiritual sources like the occult and witchcraft to find power and influence, to be able to overcome the obstacles of life but the power that they're operating in is a dark power, and it's a power that doesn't belong to them. It's borrowed power, and it always has strings attached. Yet those who are in Christ have access to a far greater power, a power that does belong to them because all things are yours in Christ Jesus, and the Father is pleased to give you the keys to his kingdom. Those who have been abused, those who have been stripped of their freedoms or made to feel powerless through traumatic loss are the most vulnerable to counterfeit forms of spiritual power. But Jesus is calling you home today. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor to proclaim liberty to the captives, set the oppressed free, open blind eyes. How did he do that? By restoring the image of God and man, by bringing value, turning on the light, and allowing people to see that in him we live and move and have our being. Everyone focuses on the scripture, John 16, 8, where it says the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. But the sin is not believing in him. Because he is the source of life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. In him, we find validation, affirmation, justification, sanctification, and value. And that empowers self-control. If you've dabbled in witchcraft, I'm not condemning you today. I'm extending an olive branch. I'm going to show you a different way. Because if Harry Potter and shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer taught us anything, is that young people are sincerely seeking. They are looking for a source of something outside themselves, a higher power. And I'm telling you, the Most High trumps any other power. These people already have a gift of faith. 
Faith opens the door to the supernatural, but it is love, agape love, the love of God that directs you through the right circuit. And that's important to know because I'm going to share with you some secrets about spiritual power. Human beings are conduits. They're catalysts, just like a lightning cable that you hook up to your, your phone. We all need to be plugged into something. We have no power in and of ourselves. We are vessels. We are conduits. And God wants to share his power with you today. So when it comes to spiritual power, it's important to know where it's coming from and how you're using it because the source definitely matters. But adhering to this form of godliness without any power, it's like trying to cook food without a fire. And speaking of fire, God is a consuming fire. And the fire of God is referred to all throughout the Bible. God is the source of all power, just like water in its purified state. But over time, it gets polluted, becomes a mixture, and it's no longer the original purified water. We see that all throughout religion. We see that even in the church. We see that through counterfeit forms of spiritual power that have brought deception into movements of God that turn people away from operating in the power of God, have even caused people to commit the unpardonable sin, to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, to actually attribute what he's doing to the devil, just like they did to Jesus. That's the danger of religion. I'm going to tell you a story because I know some of you are, are asking, what makes you an expert? I'm no expert. I'm not Benny Hinn. I'm not one of these celebrities that are out there. I was ordained as a prophet at one church, and so I speak to you very prophetically. But the, the evangelistic side came when I opened myself up more and more and more to the Holy Spirit. And as I did, I began to, to operate in gifts of healing and, and other administrations and, 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 and manifestations of the Spirit. I, I was just ministering in a healing rooms, which you know, the very first encounter I had really freaked me out. And it, and it can freak you out. But it's okay. It's okay because we really, we need to access this level of glory and power in the Holy Spirit. I, I remember a man coming in and he had, had a ton of back issues. He said he had three or four herniated discs. I was surprised he was, he was even able to walk. According to his testimony, he was off to my left and I, I, I remember, you know, just hearing and listening to all the excuses that he made for why God hasn't healed him. He was talking about and, and just regurgitating everything the doctor said. All the doubt and unbelief in the world was coming out of this man. And I wondered, what is he doing here? And, and, and I almost felt there was a spirit behind it. And as I was just in the middle of praying for someone else, I stopped what I was doing because I overheard what he was saying in it and something rose up in me it was it was the it was a holy kind of of anger it was like a reverential anger i don't know just a a, a frustration because the door of faith will cause you to be bold and confrontational i turned around I said, in Jesus' name, and before the words even came out of my mouth, I don't remember what I wanted to say. He was about 20 feet away, and as I pointed, both him and the person that was praying for him just fell out, hit the deck, right? I mean, I was just in shock because if he had three or four herniated discs, I was, I was in fear that he hurt himself. But man, it was, the, <laughs> it was either an angel that, that was operating or it was the Holy Spirit himself. It, it, you know, it was just, it was the first time I had ever witnessed something that dramatic. But he got up off the, off the floor and he was fine. I'm not saying he was entirely healed. I don't know what, what, what happened because I never saw this man again. I didn't want to draw attention to myself, but something rose up in me that was supernatural. And that's what we need to overcome the days ahead. We need something supernatural, a higher power. And there is no higher power than the Most High. Yield to Him today. Yield to the Holy Spirit what He wants to do, what He, what he wants to make available to you today.
Because yes, it drove me to, to hunger and thirst for more. I remember having meetings with, with great men and women of God. I remember seeing Randy Clark down in front at a little church in Carrollton, Texas. I had direct access to this man. Today, good luck if you can get Randy Clark to pray for you, I mean, personally and individually. But I said to him, I said, I don't want to pray anymore without any power. I don't want to, to, to have a form of godliness. I don't want to just have empty prayers that hit the ceiling when someone asks me to pray for them. I want to see results. I want to see something effective. And he said, okay. And when he prayed for me, nothing happened. I didn't fall out. I didn't feel any, any fire or any manifestation come over me. But when I started to pray for people from that day forward, things started to happen and I started to see results. But we attribute everything that's effective to the demonic. And I'm telling you, don't do that because you are running the risk of committing that impardonable sin. You cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You cannot attribute the things that come from the Spirit to something demonic. Don't be quick to call it kundalini. Not every manifestation in the church is of God, no. But understand that when it is real, the fruit will be undeniable and you will know you will know. Witches know. Those in the New Age know that what they have is, is, is something, but they've also been lied to and told by anyone who's had any, any, any encounter with Satan that God is the one. God is the one who's the enemy. God is the threat. God is the problem. God is the one holding out. God is the one who, just like in the Garden of Eden, when Satan called into question the goodness of God and watered that seed of doubt just enough to get us to lay down our faith, to lay down our trust, to lay down our relationship with our Father and submit ourselves to a counterfeit, to call into question the goodness of God is Satan's entire goal. Don't fall for it. Come back home. Jesus is calling all prodigals today. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Reach out to Him and receive the Holy Spirit, the true living source of power. Most Christians live like God is somewhere out there in a galaxy far, far away. But a seismic shift occurs when you are born again and can sense a different being growing inside of you. I mean, it's the Holy Spirit just merging with your spirit. And as you grow, as you develop your sensitivity, you become aware of His wants, His desires, His promptings. And when faith and obedience merge, power is released. I want that to be real to you today. Thanks again for watching. And if this has been a blessing, share this with someone who needs to hear it. Give us that like and don't forget to subscribe and get in on the ground floor of what the Holy Spirit is doing. I'm going to minister and, and teach more on the power of God because that's what you came for and I'm going to deliver it. I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching the reboot. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. To show your support, please share this with your friends. Give us a like and introduce yourself in the comment section below. We'd love to pray for you.